Hey guys, and welcome to our first online Q&A. Um, I have to remember to say to push the subscribe button. <laughs> so, and the, there is like this, uh, what is it, like a doorbell, push the doorbell. So then you will get our updates every week. Um, to do the interview, we have Pauline behind the camera. Hi, hi. <laughs> And I'm just looking forward to share this knowledge with you. So here we go. So the first question we received um, is, is tap water good to drink? Yes and no. So the thing is like there's consciousness and flow in water. Water is 70% of our body system. Water is what connect and combine us. So I can never say that water is not good for what is not good for us in the tap water is that depending on where you live in the world, there is a lot of different things in added to the tap water. So the most uh, correct way to answer this is you have to feel how the water feels to you. You have to tap into how it feels in the location that you are in. And you can always filter the water. If you are in a state of fear, then I will tell you, you don't have to fear, but what you can do is you can hold the water and you can link to a vibration of love and you can ask to clean the water. So when you drink the water, you only connect to what is beneficial for yourself and your system. How important is this pure water in terms of memory and cellular memory in these times? So it's super important, but again, what we need to remember is the consciousness and floating uh, cellular memory, it's, it's all around us, right? So if you have one liter of tap water and only one drop of pure water, then you are able to link to that one drop of pure water. So we don't have to um, be scared of things not being pure enough or not daring to like what happens often is that we go into a mental perception we go into a mind loop that actually prevent prevents us from feeling the flow of what is know that you can always consciously link to the best and highest vibration in whatever you are in connecting connection with the next, next question that you received is um, from someone that mentioned that a long time ago women misused their psychic abilities and treated men wrongly. In return, men suppressed women and their paranormal uh, <laughs> capacities. It was also said that the male soul has not fully healed, whereas the female soul already did and is waiting for rebalancing of men. This is amazing. I never heard this version before. <laughs> I should not laugh at our questions. Okay, um, tapping into that one. Um, that is not how I perceive reality. <laughs> I cannot see that story as a, as a truth, but what I can do is shifting into your perceptions. Okay, so in your perception, what it has something to do with is more the feeling of powerlessness. It's more the feeling of man not standing up for himself in his true form and shape. It has not so much to do with what people did with or without uh, psychic abilities. We cannot say what came first, the chicken or the egg, you know. But what we can look into is that the male aspect of society, the day to day, uh, have been in in a roller coaster and what we need to do now is we need to take ourselves back to having the male expression to stand strong within ourselves to be stable but also to allow the emotions so for a long period what we've been talking about is that the female aspects should integrate and we should become one with it which was true for that moment but what we need now is to recreate balance and in, in order of recreating balance, we need the men <laughs> or the masculinity to 
uh, regain its strength. So we have to flow like the water and we have the stability and straightforward, all centered in one. So when you heal that aspect within you, they feel fear to what's standing strong within yourself, then you will heal that feeling of being misused uh, in the past. So it's very much about integrating the male and female act aspect within oneself. Yes. Everything is about integration within oneself. And but a really important thing to remember is that on planet Earth, even that we are here in non-duality trying to play this game, you were created as female, male, right? So we are playing these roles, which means that the one person often <laughs> It's created to contain more of the masculinity and the other one more of the femininity because then together we create balance. It doesn't mean that we are not sustainable within oneself, but it means that we are playing a game where we are taking roles, where we are allowing ourselves to be part of aspects so we together can reunite and create new outcomes. What is your perception about praying? On one hand, it feels like uh, reaching out or it's a, like a kind of a silly way of looking for something outside of myself. But on the other hand, it also gives me um, calmness, positivity, and it feels like it can also shift the field um, and, and therefore be useful. What, what is your take on, on prayers? So again, everything is individually because we need to look into that everything is energy, right? So what is your intention when you pray? Which emotion are you sitting with when you pray? What energy are you sending out? So if we have the old structure of people going to church and they are praying to let go, please let go of all my sins. Oh, bless me, Lord. So the feeling they are sitting with is sorrow. It's uh, holding themselves down and it's literally... Um, like this downward energy. If you, on the other hand, are praying like, thank you, Lord, for all the beautiful things you gave me today and for us to stand together as one unit. And I really, truly believe and hope in faith and that we can create a better society, then the energy are going upwards because you're opening your heart. And in that heart openness specter, you read a different vibration. So my take on prayers is if it feels good to you to do the prayer, you should definitely do the prayers. Um, some people need to ask for help in order of realizing that they are not alone. So these people will say, please, please help me. And they will get the help through the prayers and that will help them to come to the next stage in their development, which means faith or trust. And then the next step from there for them will be self-trust. So it really always depends on which setting you have and which person are um, in that situation. How to regain joy and happiness after a broken marriage? <laughs> or heartbreak, separation. So, no matter which connections we have in life, um, every open heart moment is to move us. So if you have like one creation, we can call it, this is me. <laughs> Nothing can move you out of that. The only thing that can knock your head over heels is if somebody makes you feel so deep in love that you cannot do anything else than fall, right? So every heartbreak has a purpose. And it's not always that we are meant to be in the situations for longer than just moving us from where we were to where we have to be in order of figuring out where we need to go. So the best thing we can do in order of regaining our happiness is Accepting and allowing that it takes time to get over 
allow all your emotional aspects all the sorrow, all the pain, all the anger, all that probably is there and then look into the whole perception of forgiveness and what did I get out of this? What did I need to learn? What did this marriage show me? What did it show me that I don't want in life? What does it show me that I desire in life? And how can I, with that knowledge, thank this situation and move forward? So to bring back your joy and love and laughter, you need to first accept that you are not there. and Be okay with the situation you are in within yourself. So you're probably in this home quarantine and if you just got out of a marriage sitting home alone, of course you are not happy. Come on. <laughs> this is impossible. So not impossible, just not that easy. So it's really truly just to be with whatever feelings you have for your moment, for a while. And then of course, like what I always did, is every single day you need to imply something that makes you smile. You need to imply something that make your heart skip a bit or something you feel grateful for. And if there's nothing in the material world or in the emotional world, then watch a stupid funny comedy. So just something there, way up the heavy emotions. So let the emotion flow, be in them, let it process through your system, but always come back to a sender or a feeling of joy or happiness. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what tricks it, it's only to create a bit of balance within the chaos. What are the tools to support myself in the coming months? Well, it also depends who you are. <laughs> and let's see. So, patience. Patience and just be with yourself. Just look into whatever you need to look into at this moment. There's so much going on. And we cannot fully predict the future. Because there are so many possible outcomes. What I do is I... I see possible outcomes and all after which choices humanity makes. We are more uh, uh, vibrationally matched to one outcome than the other. So at this point, there's a lot of possible outcomes, but there's no certainty. Which means that we are like ready to go into the unknown. But <laughs> so for now, the only thing we can do is look inside of ourselves. It's to be with with what is and to create those moments of freedom within everyday life. So if you are one of those people who are in fear, who are in, in pain, maybe even what you want to do is you want to create a moment, like a space within your daily life where you realize that in this exact moment, I'm good. Everything is fine. I'm not hungry. I'm almost not cold because I turned on my radiator <laughs> and uh, I am safe. So in this exact moment, I am good. And then feel that peace within your system and feel that moment of being. And that will be your greatest tool in this time of waiting. When the world starts moving up again, we can make the next choices, we can make the next decisions. But until now, right here, it's all about being with you and look what is there. The outside world and news feed leaves me with a deep sense of injustice. It also seems to link emotionally to other lifetimes I had. How can I find out where this feeling is coming from? Uh, I didn't like uh, the injustice that is taken from, that is perceived within the news feed. On the news? In the news feed, in the outside, outside world. Ah. Exactly. So, um, okay, we, if we look energetically into what is going on, <laughs> 
there is uh, a lot of different vibrations. There is a lot of history repeating itself. There is some uh, new newbies, and and there is a lot of control or attempt to control from different sources, right? So these vibrations will always be a vibrational match to something that you have experienced in your past life because it's the same energy, it's just represented in different outcomes, different forms, and you had different roles. So the best thing we can do is just watch whatever comes up, look into whatever is meant to be looked at. So if you feel injustice, then ask yourself, why do I feel injustice? Where is these memories from me coming from? And how can I use them to maybe do it differently in this life? What is my role to take in this life? What can I do within myself uh, to be a vibrational image, for example, to peace? In this time, we have like this battle between the good and the evil, right? <laughs> but the thing that a lot of people fail to realize is when you are in a battle it doesn't matter if you're black or white because what you send out is fight so the energy you send out is fight that is not peace so if we truly want to do a battle we need to see the other side have understanding for the other side but standing strong within the side that we chose to be on. So we become the example that we wish to see and meet in the world around us. I feel a timeline uh, shift since a few weeks, personally and collectively. Where does that come from? I think it's kind of the same uh, question, no? <laughs> same question, same answer. Different question, same answer. So. <laughs> It is that history is repeating itself. Yay! But different time, different settings. So if you have this déjà vu feeling, it is because it is sort of kind of is a déjà vu. Only that we are in a different timeline, different setting, but the energy represented is the same. So take time, be with yourself and ask yourself, what is my role? To play in this outcome how can i how can i embrace my role the best in the time being how can i be true to myself follow my own path and detach myself from my parents without hurting them especially when it comes to religious beliefs so this is always a hard one um, because that in these religion uh, constructions is a lot of control and there is a lot of um, if you do not follow then you know but if we uh, zoom out and look at society in this moment then we are super controlled by society and if we do not follow then so you can ask yourself, what would I do in my daily life in this situation surrounding me? The whole Corona thing. How am I acting here? And how can I let that reflect back to how I will act and react in my own family? Is there an easy and accessible practice to transform negative and self-harming thought forms? How can I reconnect to source consciousness and disconnect from the har harming programming within my own system? The first thing we need to look into is that uh, we need to not judge ourselves for where we are. So um, we know this feeling of internal bliss. This is where we want to be, always. <laughs> but this is heaven. We are on earth, right? So we were somewhere in the middle. And when we are here, we will always be ever flowing. That means that even if we are in bliss or heart open, we will still be part of the emotional the outplay there is going on because that is what moves us. That is what changes. That is what develop. Um, so the best thing you can do is to fully, fully, 
fully accept where you are right now and with what there is within you right now. Because only through full acceptance of what is can you reach that part of internal bliss within. <laughs> okay, guys. So this was uh, all we could uh, all we could reach in this first video. This is our very first time uh, with this setting, so I'm really curious how it feels for you guys. And um, if you like this this structure. Or if there's something else you will feel more appealing, please read, write it in the comments below. <laughs> and I will read it and we will take it up because this is for you guys. And uh, I will love you guys to feel home, invited, and that the information which is shared is something you can use along your path. So yeah, please let us know in the comments below and if you guys have any questions that you would like us to take up in our follow-up, which will be next week at exactly the same time, same place, YouTube, um, please send us an email. I have the email, it's in the description underneath the video. Boop, boop. So yeah, and I will read the emails personally. Every person will be anonymous. So it doesn't matter how close it is to your heart, um, your name will not be mentioned, but uh, I would love to help you to get closer to wherever you feel you need to go or wherever you need to see. So thank you guys and we're looking forward to see you next week. Namaste.